So Clementine was a mission to the moon and then to uh, the asteroid Geographos. It uh, was a concept um, mission where we were mostly trying to take existing miniaturized technology and rapidly turn it into a uh, space platform. Frankly, none of us were sure what we were getting into. This was new territory. We'd never done anything other than Earth orbiting satellites, how you track a satellite out at those, you know, distances and all that, that was all new stuff. We had to take basically a concept from a napkin and we had less than two years to design, build, integrate, test, launch and operate a mission of such complexity that even if you took today's technology and tried to accomplish that, that, that type of uh, achievement, it would have been extremely difficult to be able to uh, complete. It's, it's different than normal schedule pressure. When you're going after an asteroid that's just flying by, you know, if you're not there, that's it. You're done. There's no such thing as, oh, give me another week or so. Mm-mm, can't do it. It was a very exciting uh, time leading up to it with all the contingency plannings. We had a very short, in relative terms, launch window where we had to get off the ground and on our way or we were not going to be able to get to the asteroid. The command we thought had been sent that would do a certain thing did something else. It opened the valves on the propulsion system and poof, spun the satellite up and we, we used all the remaining fuel. So the geographos part never happened. We found a facility, a National Guard armory, that was nothing more than a shell of a building, roll-up garage doors, oil on the floor, and we had to start from scratch and retrofit that whole building into a state-of-the-art satellite operations facility. The Bat Cave got its name. It was a Honeywell building, and it was a had large truck bays. Um, bats had taken residence up in that large high bay area where these trucks were, and so it got the name the Bat Cave, but it was a cool name for where we were doing mission operations for the Clementine mission. When we finally got into orbit around the moon and we had gotten confirmation that the satellite was in fact in orbit around the moon, pretty easy to miss it unless you slow the satellite down just the right amount. Too much is not good, too little is not good. Uh, you just skip right on by. So we hit it, we nailed it. We were in a perfect orbit and I couldn't be happier. We worked 12 hour shifts at the Bat Cave. Um, lots of times I volunteered to stay on the night shift uh, for doing those mission operations. Less um, dignitaries walking through and able to focus on what was going on with the mission. We in effect transferred almost two million digital images of the lunar surface to our ground station and this was not transferred from a low earth orbit or a geosynchronous orbit but from those those long distances so in effect it was it was an amazing achievement to be able to transfer uh, almost two million digital images of the lunar surface and this was kind of the birth of the you know the internet and so that data was streaming on very little delay it was damn near real time and people who knew the address could access it and some of the you know, VIPs over in the Pentagon were going gaga. They were sitting there at their terminal. <laughs> it's great. Internally and, and even externally, a lot of people knew it as Clementine because it was gonna follow the story of, of the, the song, um, My Darling Clementine. And after that, it was gonna do the flyby of Geographos, complete its mission, and it would have been lost and gone forever at that. So where did it end up? It is definitely lost and gone forever. It's in a, I think they call it heliocentric orbit. The satellite went past and it's in an orbit similar to that, maybe a little outside of it. And there are stories that 15 years after Clementine launched, it probably came back past Earth again. What's in this <clears throat> heliocentric orbit, dead as a doornail, 
But the data that he collected surely lives on.